Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the terrifying world of your imagination. What would you say is the one single feature that distinguishes man from all his fellow creatures? His brain? Speech? His ability to walk erect? The fact that he's the only living thing that kills for any other reason than self-defense or food? None of them. Something much more simple. A phenomenon shared only by our cousins, the apes. The human hand. This is a gripping, eerie story of a pair of... Uh, how best to describe them? Superhuman? Unique? N no, perhaps best. A pair of immortal hands. What time is it? Four o'clock, Doctor. Over seven hours. My fingers are numb, Helga. May I finish the suit just for you, Herr Doctor? Yeah, speed is very important. Morphine is beginning to wear off. Dare I drug him again? Oh, absolutely not. Young, healthy as he is, we could kill him. Here, yeah. you take the needle so carefully. These hands must still be able to make the greatest music in all Vienna, in all the civilized world, if the graft holds... Though I fly in the face of the Almighty, I have done what I have done. Dear God, may my gamble succeed and be forgiven. Our mystery drama, Death by Whose Hands, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Stefan Schnabel and Robert Drivers. I'll be back shortly with Act One. In the beginning of the 19th century, no city in Europe shone more brightly or boasted a more resplendent culture than Vienna. City of dreams, of glittering balls, of royalty and nobility and beautiful women. But most of all, of music. Music to the Viennese was, and is, a religion, a faith, a passion. And passion is an insidious, destructive emotion which can lead to sinister and deadly results. You are listening at the moment to the hands of Rudy Baum on the piano in Vienna's great concert hall. Change first. I am ringing. What? Oh, the touch of your hands. <laughs> From the whisper of Mozart to the thunder of Beethoven. <laughs> oh, we must protect those hands. As a doctor and your future father-in-law, I will make that my business. <laughs> well, I intend to be a little part of that legend, you see. Magnificent, Rudy. Du hast wirklich glänzend gespielt. Yes, you were at your best, my friend. It was a remarkable debut. Remarkable? Well, it was a successful beyond our wildest dreams. Beyond mine, I must admit. Rudy, I'll drive you back to the university. No, we, 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 we can drive, Rudy. Oh, Father, won't we be able to drive in the carriage? Yes. Well, you and I, Helga, Rudy, and Franz. You are coming to our little supper and celebration, aren't you, Franz? I wasn't sure I was invited. Rudy, best friend and fellow pianist. But of course. Well, I accept. I'll go and fetch my hat and cape. There is, and I will go with you. <laughs> there will be important people coming backstage. Oh, you won't mind waiting a while, huh? Hell down front. Naturally, please. We'll try not to be too long. 
You didn't answer the head doctor, Franz. Did I have any other choice than to remain and cool my heels? I think my friend tonight, your nose, is a little out of joint. Why do you say that? Listen to them. Can you hope to match it at your debut? That remains to be seen. I think I'll wait outside. It's uncomfortably hot. Huh? <laughs> Only for other pianists, I'm afraid, Franz Langemann. for you, Rudy. No, it's only the beginning. I'm sure of that. Oh, but you're right. It is a big night. It's the start of everything I've worked and slaved for all my life. You wouldn't understand. Why not? Haven't I done the same? You? <laughs> How could you know what I've suffered? You started with everything. I was nothing. I'm poor. Sure. I'm not downright ugly. At least I'm no tall, handsome, elegant, dandy like you. But I've got it all in these hands of mine now. I've got the girl. I've got her father as patron. And soon I'll have all the rest. The money, the fame, the clothes. I've beaten you, Franz. I've beaten you. And I did it all with my talent. With these. All right, Rudy. All right. You've had a great success, but don't let it go to your head. You're not the only pianist in Vienna. Oh, yes, I am now. Well, some of your classmates still have to make their debuts. Who? Gelba? No technique. Struck? Is here. Made of tin. Rongel? He's all thumbs. And me? You. You are nothing. You've no tone. You wouldn't. You step. You play like a music box. I ought to stop this carriage right now and throw you out. Go ahead. We're almost there. No, I'll do you this one last favor. We'll get there as fast as I can so I can get rid of you for good. Get up. Hey, look out. Find the streets are icy. It's your big night. I'm only giving you something else to thrill about. There's a curve ahead. And that wagon has stopped blocking the road. Find like out. Look out. This is the road. suppose is keeping Rudy so late. Oh, so impatient to announce the engagement, eh? Well, of course. Why not? Uh, it's not easy to be the wife of a man who belongs to the public. Oh, but I can't wait to be married to Rudy. To travel with him everywhere. To be feted by the great. To have kings and queens lavish praise and honor on us. <laughs> uh, there isn't much warmth in the light from reflected glory. What warms a woman is love. Oh, really, Papa? I'm getting exactly what I want. But I do wish... Help, Sianzi, bitte. Help, Sianzi. What, what is it, Helga? What is it? Uh, bitte, Herr Doctor, may I see you alone? No, I want to hear also. There is an inspector of police downstairs. Police? There's been an accident. We are both needed at the infirmary. An accident? To whom? I don't know how. But speak to... up, speak up. If it concerns Ilda, she'll have to know sooner or later. Herr Langemann's light carriage collided with a heavy dragon. Franz has been badly hurt. And Rudy? Were his hands injured? No. He he has a concussion only. Well, we'll go immediately. Is he conscious? No. Oh, I... Catch her, Helga. No, no, I, I'm... I'm all right. I'm not going to faint. I'm going with you to the infirmary. <laughs> The hemorrhage is so massive. Brain destruction is irreversible. I'm surprised Rudy's still breathing. Oh, the music these hands made less than three hours ago. The music they could have continued to make. All vanished. Oh, what a loss. What an irreparable loss to the world. And to your daughter. Oh, yes, Ilse. I, I, I cannot face her now, Helga. Will you, old friend? Trust me. I'll take her home and sedate her. No, no, no. Give her something here before she leaves. Uh, the inspector can see her home. I, uh, I need you here. As you wish. But 
should want to see Rudy. What do I tell her? Oh, tell her, tell her, tell her. She, she must wait. Uh, don't hold out any hope. And Franz? Well, I'm going to see him now. Uh, tell Ilse he had some, uh, some hand injuries. Say he's under sedation. And be sure that policeman takes Ilse home. He's asked all he needs to know. It's all right here, Doctor. I'm awake. Yes, I see. How is Rudy? Rudy is uh, uh, asleep. Uh, are you in pain? No, the morphine does that. I, I deserve it anyway. Why? It was my fault. He was so swelled with his success, he blurted out the truth. He's been using all of us. Me, you, Wilsa. He informed me he had no use for me anymore. Of course, he still needs you and he'll say. Oh, I, I don't know why I'm even saying this, my hair. I... Rudy has no need of any of us anymore. You said he was a... He's dead. He might as well be. Oh, what does that mean? His skull was fractured. He has had massive intracranial bleeding. And his brain is damaged beyond repair. In a sense, he's still alive. Medically, he, he's dead. It's only a matter of time till the rest of him dies, too. And I am the one to live. Yes. You will live. My hands, how bad are they? When the wagon ran over them, the, the right one was severed, was moribund, devoid of all life by the time you were brought here. And the other? Crushed beyond hope. If it can be saved from amputation, at best it will be a withered, motionless claw. <sighs> Why wasn't I the one to die? I, I, I can never play the piano again. There is one way you could. How? If I gave you Rudy Baum's hands. <laughs> Franz stares up at the usually kind and humorous face of the Herr Dr. Herschel. Now it is stern and drained, the eyes boring down at the young man, gleaming with a strange fanaticism. What he is proposing is beyond belief, beyond possibility, beyond the laws of man and God. I'll return shortly with Act Two. Vaccination has been discovered eight years before, but anesthesia will not even be conceived of till 1842. The only antidotes against pain are alcohol, opium, and a man's determination. And Franz Langemann lies in a bed in Dr. Herschel's private infirmary facing a transplant infinitely more complicated than anything medicine has dreamed of today. Rudy's hands! But he's still not dead. But the moment his heart stops to beat, we can take them. Still alive and pulsing. Could it work? Could I use them as hands? I don't know, Franz. I know only you have nothing to lose. If the transplant fails, you will be no worse off than you are now. And if it succeeds? If it succeeds? You're a musician. What better tools could you have to create beauty in music than the fingers and the hands of Rudy Baum? Very well. If Rudy is gone, I agree. <laughs> Put the horses away. I'll sleep till mid-afternoon. 
I won't need you before then. Papa! Oh, yes, sir. Well, what are you doing up so early? Early? It's almost nine o'clock. How is Rudy? Oh, what can I say, Liebchen? To make it easy for you. He's... dead. I knew it. He's dead. Yes. Here's the eye. It's all right, Papa. When you were so long, I knew. And Franz. Franz is, uh. He will live. He's fine. What about his hands? Uh, that's what, uh. What kept me so long. Helga and I were, uh. Were operating on them. Well, will he have the use of them again? I hope a great deal more than that. He might even be able to play again? It's too soon to know anything. It'll, it'll take months. Oh, what's the difference? It won't be Rudy. Nobody ever will play like Rudy Baum again. Not in your lifetime, Papa. Or in mine. Well, it would seem too much to hope for, would it not, meine Tochter? And yet, I am going to dare to hope. Now, and no sign of gangrene? Yes. Yes, there seems to be circulation in all the fingers. But no uh, sensation yet. The nerves need time to regenerate. So, now, Franz, we are taking off some of the bandages to, to free the fingers. Yes, Doctor. Now, Franz, uh, which hand am I touching? I... I don't know. I don't know. I... I have no hands. It isn't working. Patience, patience. Let me try something else. Move your right thumb. Uh, I can't. All right. I'll try the lift. It moved. It moved. So, we make a beginning. Uh, now we try the other fingers one by one. And as you see, today we take all the bandages off for good. These terrible scars. No, no, not terrible. Beautiful. Well, you will see within a year there will be thin white lines you can hardly detect. Besides, I made the grafts far enough back so that your linen will cover them at all times. Even when you play. You really expect that I will ever play the piano again? I hope. I hope with all my heart. Now we try the exercises again. Here, pick up the pencil. I can't. I can't feel the damn thing. The feeling will come. No, never. They work, they move, but they have no feeling. I tell you, it's all been for nothing. I'm wearing a dead man's hands. Good morning, Franz. Morgen, lieber Herr Doctor. How do you feel today? Oh, I haven't had any pain in them for the last two or three days. The first part is over. We are going home. Home. I will not go back to the Schloss. It is too big, and with my family gone... Of course, of course you don't return to the castle. <laughs> You're coming home with us. Ach, no, my dear, I cannot impose on your hospitality. I insist. You are my patient, you are my protégé, and my prodigy. <laughs> Besides, you still need care and supervision for your exercises. Yes, at home we will have a new teacher for you. Who? Ilse. Helga has been training her to assist with your rehabilitation. Does... Does Ilse know about... About the hands? No. No one knows that secret. Save you and I and Helga. No one has ever known. As far as the world is concerned, 
And you, Franz. These are your hands. You must think of them from now on. Every moment, waking or sleeping, is as your hands. Yours. But they are not. They are Rudy Bombs. Rudy Bomb is dead. Come, let us go home. I have some uh, special bandages that you will wear always. Now, come. Ilse is waiting to see you eagerly. Ilse? To see me? Well, I will tell you a secret, and uh, then we shall never mention it again. Uh, I believe sincerely that it was not Rudy my daughter loved. She was just blinded and bewitched by his uh, talent. I can be truthful when I say she mourns him no longer. Well, aren't you anxious to see her? Ilse? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go home. Guten Tag, Franz. Ilse, I didn't hear you come in. Guten Tag. Where's Papa? He went back to the infirmary after lunch. Oh, I thought you and he were together. And now that I'm here, I must take up my duties. Will you come to the table? Are we to eat again? No. We're going to start your exercises. Oh. Your poor hands. To think. That night, Pa never told me how badly they were injured. There's not a sign of a scar. Your father is a magician. No. <laughs> I know he's prouder of his success with you than anything he's ever done. Do they still hurt? No. Even when I hold them? My hands are not what you heard, Ilsa. It was my heart that was in your hands. Oh, that was a long time ago, Franz. It's over. Shall we start again, then? Us? Again. No, I meant the exercises. Morgan, Franz. What are you doing here in the music room? Ilse, suddenly, 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 yes. I feel that my hands may be ready to try again. Then try it. Ilse, uh, forgive me. I know you will understand. I... I, I want to be alone in the house. I I want no one to hear me until I'm ready. If that is what you wish, Liebling. Liebling? Oh, that, that was a slip of the tongue. I'll take it as that for now. But if... Uh, is it, will you help me in a plan I have? Ask me. Well, your father's birthday is two months away. I, I want to repay him for all he's done for me in a way beyond money. Let me have four hours a day. Alone. Here. No one but the servants in the house and swear them to silence. Let the hair doctor think I'm taking my regular exercises to strengthen my hands. Instead, let me exercise them where they belong. On the keyboard. Oh, that's marvelous. Only I... Only what? No, if, if only I could share it with you. No one can share this private agony. Liebchen, yes, I, I, I will call you that, and I hope that I have the right to. But I won't know for at least two months. Help me. In everything. Always. Yes. Oh, darling. Darling. And that was not a slip of the tongue. I'll be out of the house in ten minutes, and you can start to build your triumph alone. <laughs> a dinner fit for a king and a birthday cake made for an emperor. <laughs> I had forgotten it was my birthday, but then that's, <laughs> that's easy to do at my age. We'll have uh, port and brandy and coffee in the music room. Music room? Why there? Now, don't ask questions, Papa. On a birthday, there are many surprises. There's one very special gift you haven't received yet. 
from France. Oh, I don't need any any gifts. This one permit me to offer you. Ilse. Thank you, Franz. Lieber Herr Doctor. Danke schön. Now sit with me, Papa. Here on the sofa. Oh, this is all so so mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> what are you up to? Shh, listen. Lieber Herr Doctor Herschel und mein Liebchen Ilse. This is a moment of terrifying truth. I am Lazarus. But am I surely risen from the dead? For all of us, music is a way of life. If it is still mine, then this is the best birthday gift I can offer either of you. In return for all you've done for me. Here it is. How can I thank you? <laughs> but this is not just for me. You, you will concertize. Oh, of course. He's going to set the world on fire. And that's the other birthday present we have for you, Papa. What? More? More? Franz is not only your prodigy. He's going to be your son. We're going to be married. Oh, at last. At last. Well, this is not my birthday. It's, it's the beginning of the world. <laughs> Must you go? Time enough for us. This is his celebration. Let us wait for ours. If I must. Don't tempt me. You were so wonderful tonight. The tone, your hands. All of me is yours. Then come. Come to bed. of the restless dreams that are torturing her intended husband. And neither of them is aware of the nervous tensing and extension of the hands that once were Rudy Baum's. Hands joined to the body of Franz Langemann. I'll return shortly with Act Three. that fall of Franz Langemann was sensational. The public took him to their hearts, and the critics were unanimous in praise, projecting for him the brilliant future that had been denied Rudy Baum by his untimely death. So bright indeed were all Franz's prospects that he seemed to have banished the tortured dreams that haunted his sleep. 
till the morning of his wedding day. He was standing before the pier glass, adjusting his white cravat when... <laughs> oh. Don't turn around, friends. You won't find me in the room. Here. In the mirror. Why are you here? What is it you want? Everything that was mine. Ilsa. My career. My hands. I cannot give any of it back. You will give me all of it back, Franz. All that is mine. Look how they buried me. Two bleeding wrists. My hands torn from my arms. You might as well have opened my chest and ripped my heart from its moorings. But I will have my revenge. You're dead. Not till I am whole. I can never rest. Until I am told. Stay back! Stay back! God help me! Franz? Franz, are you all right? Franz, what happened? I, I, I seem to have smashed the pier glass with a chair. But why? Here, doctor, I, 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 I cannot marry you, sir. We, we will have to call the wedding off. Guests are already arriving. Ilse is dressed in her bridal gown. What's the matter, boy? Are you mad? More than a little, I'm afraid. I can guess perhaps what troubles you. Uh, let us sit down together then and, and talk this over. So Rudy has been haunting your dreams, and now today his specter appeared in the mirror. Yes. And you feel that uh, his uneasy spirit is doomed to haunt you, that his ghost will forever dog your footsteps? Yes. Certainly if I marry Ilse. And I love her too much to put her through that, too. Franz, you are an exceptionally kind and sensitive man. Now, you've been through an agonizing and traumatic experience... You have been driving yourself, practicing long hours for your concert debut. You are exhausted physically and emotionally. The mind is simply playing you tricks. No, you don't understand. Rudy Baum was no friend of mine. You remember? I tried to tell you that night, the night of the accident. Oh, yeah, yeah, so you did, I recall. Rudy was my enemy. He resented me, hated me. The night of his triumph, when he had everything, he gloated over it. He threw it in my teeth. Well, then, that is it, Franz. <laughs> Why should you have any remorse? You think it is only remorse that conjures up these visions? Of course. That and your oversensitive nature. And I can help there. I will give you some milder sedation for the days. And for the nights. <laughs> if you need it. <laughs> I should think uh, Ilza would be better than all my pills for that. <laughs> what you need is her to take care of you. Ilza, Franz, welcome home. Oh, Papa, it's good to be back. It's good to see you here, Doctor. So, now, tell me all about the tour. It was brilliant, marvelous, unbelievable. Standing ovations everywhere. <laughs> France was the lion of the hour. He looks like a rather tired lion. Oh, just need a couple of days rest. I must look a fright after that long carriage ride. You'll excuse me while I change. Oh, I forgot. We are to give a special concert recital for the Emperor at Schönbrunn. Imagine! Our own emperor! Well, oh, she is wildly happy. Yes, Ilsa thrives on all the social life. Well, you don't seem to share her enthusiasm. Oh, my God, how can I? Oh, come on, France. Not so bad to be wined and dined. The important thing is to remember it's a tribute to your genius. My genius. Do you really think it is I they applaud? Who else? These, these, that's what they come to worship. And who makes them work? Not I. 
I tell you, they have a life of their own. Do you think I could attack the Beethoven Emperor as though notes exploded from one of Napoleon's cannons? I tell you, they are beyond my control, and it is driving me mad. I want to play my own music, be my own man. These may be the hands of a genius, but Lord help me, they are not mine. I never want to play the piano again. Ron? Yes, Ilsa. What are you doing out of bed? Thinking. Well, must you sit by the window, come back to bed, and think with me? I'm afraid in bed with you, Ilsa, I don't think very clearly. <laughs> it's better when you don't think at all. That used to be a way out. No longer. What do you mean? Ilsa. Listen to me. I don't want to play again. Are you out of your mind? The king, the queen, Napoleon and the Empress Josephine. Are they so important to you? Well, what are you trying to say? Are they more important to you than my peace of soul? Now, really, Franz, you should live to play. Why? Because it's expected of you. By whom? Well, by uh, the nobility, royalty, uh, everyone who hears your music. And you? Yes, and my father. Oh, no. Your father understands. And for the rest, there's always a new artist, a new interest. The truth is, isn't it, that I must keep on playing for you. Well, that isn't true. Then, if you love me, agree that my career is over. Would you love me still, just as Franz Langemann... You're being foolish, Liebling. This is just another temperamental display. Why should you stop playing? I won't allow you to. Won't you, Ilse? I think it's time we put things to a test. What are you doing? I want to show you something. I don't think I want to see it. At last you must. Mm. You see my arms? Why do you think I wear these bandages above my wrists? Well, you, you always said the scars were... Ugly, and it... <laughs> Ugly? Let me show you the truth. Look at both arms. What? There's nothing there but... But a thin white line. On each arm, all the way around. See? Yes, but... But I thought... In the accident, Rudy's brain was injured fatally. But the rest of him was untouched. All of me was untouched except my hands. They were completely destroyed. But if they were... If they were... Oh! Oh, no. Yes, it... Oh, no. Yes, yes, these are Rudy's hands, grafted to me miraculously by your surgeon father. No! These are what you love, aren't they? Not me! I... I, I, Even when they were still Rudy's, it was these hands and the fame and the notoriety and the acclaim that could win and really claim your love. The man behind them meant little except a means to an end. Oh, right. No, I... Uh, uh, Franz, I... No, I, I give you one last choice, Ilse. Rudy can never play again and promise you I never will. But you stay with me as my wife and care for me and nourish me. Now I know you're mad. And I'll not waste my life on you. I forced myself to endure Rudy because I knew he could carry me with him to the top. I found you more endurable if you could give me the same. But if you turn your back on success and glory, don't ask me to do the same. You cannot love me for myself. Only for these. With those hands. <gasps> no matter whose. You can rule the world. Even though they destroy me. Oh, I don't know why I wasted my time on such a fool. Those hands are not for destruction. Even about your throat. Say you love me. Oh, stop being a child, son. Say you love me. At this moment, I despise you. Now, what? 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 Well, the new pier glass I brought today, you better knock it over. You fooled us both, Fran. Children, they're my hands. What are you looking at? Can't you see him? Rudy, in the mirror. You're mad. Fran, no. No. You said to use them. Rudy, they're 
not mine. Not mine. Yours. Oh, now what is there to do? Police will come, France. You will be hanged. What does it matter? Uh, nothing can bring Rudy or, or my daughter back. But I was as guilty as anyone in this. I wanted to save a, a rare musical gift for the world. And I was tempted in the operation to, to play God. And now there's only one thing to do. What? Uh, poor Ilza must have fought. Your face is, is, is damaged. Now we must ransack the apartment. Or I will take enough valuables away with me. Then, then I will say I, I came to visit you and that I found my daughter and you and then that I rushed out for, for the police. husband and, and found them, as you see. My daughter is dead. My, my son-in-law uh, merely rendered unconscious. Uh, I, I placed him on the bed, as you see, and, and uh, came for you, Inspector. Murder and robbery, obviously. Uh, I don't know how much is missing. Uh, certainly my daughter's jewels, some ivory pieces I gave them as a wedding present. Your daughter is quite dead, strangled. How is the young man? Oh, some facial wounds, possible concussion, and... Uh, what is it here, Doctor? France! France, he has been strangled too! Tongue protruding, face livid, marks on throat, not much doubt. Some kind of maniac, it looks. <gasps> Good Minel. What is it? A maniac, all right, look. Cut right off above the wrist. He has no hands. <laughs> if anyone stopped to exhume Rudy Baum from his solitary grave, would he prove to have hands or not? As it happened, no one did. And since here Dr. Herschel died quite suddenly from a heart attack during the solemn requiem mass for his daughter and his son-in-law, why should it have occurred to anyone to question this extraordinary tale further? I'll be back shortly. One comment in closing. Man proposes, God disposes. There is never a time when man can take his work into his hand. No truer words have been spoken than in the Bible, Hosea 8, chapter 7. They have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. Our cast included Robert Drivers, Stefan Schnabel, Marion Seldes, Ira Lewis, and Roger DeCoven. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Florence would never give me a divorce. And even if she did, she'd want a big alimony. And I, I just couldn't afford you, Sherry. Well, I won't deny I'm expensive. But you could easily afford me. How? Cy Mercer and his new... Lady love are leaving early for a weekend in Bermuda. Monday's a holiday. They won't be back till Tuesday morning. 
It won't be till then that they discover the money is missing. What money? The money in the teller's drawers. How much do you think it adds up to? Well, it's the end of the month. Payday for most people. The deposits have been heavy, somewhere between six or seven hundred thousand dollars. Why? Uh, what do you want to know? I just wanted to know how much we're going to steal. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Mm -hmm.